The following program is an MLWRadio.com production. I do day in and day out. I was the best wrestler alive today. Woo! I've got the style and profile like never before. The Ric Flair Show. Woo! Woo! The world heavyweight champion, nature boy Ric Flair. Woo! The 16-time world champion back behind the mic and telling it like it is. If you're not carrying the big gold... Your second best, no matter what you tell yourself. And now, Ric Flair and Conrad Thompson. Hey, this is the Nature Boy Ric Flair, 16 times your world champion. I'm sorry I'm a little late this week, just got back from England. But we are working this out right now. I'm with my legendary friend, Conrad Thompson, Entrepreneur from hell, owner of the Conradison, <laughs> the second wealthiest man in the state of Alabama, and my best friend. Hello, Conrad. What's up, buddy? Hey, hey. How's it going, man? How are you? I just got back from England, man. Sorry I'm a day late and a dollar short. Well, you know what? I think we're going to have a good time anyway. Let's go ahead and get into it. It's the Figure Four Top Stories brought to you by RickFlairShow.com's online store. Check out all the brand new tees like Dr. Wu, Wooter, Space Mountain, and more right at the merch link on RickFlairShow.com. Just go to RickFlairShow.com and click the merch link at the top of the page. All right, let's get into the top stories this week, Rick. Uh, the CM Punk fight is now behind us. Did you have a chance to check it out? What did you think? I did, and uh, I actually felt bad for him. Yeah. Um, I just think that... Um, Number one, it's a lot uh, to bite off, you know, and uh, he's been injured a couple times, I guess, while training. But, you know, you always want to go out there and you hope for the best for everybody because if, if he wins, it makes us look bad. But if you lose um, like that, it just, you know, I mean, if, if you win, it makes us look good, meaning the wrestling business. But the problem I have, as we've discussed before, He's been so negative and, and knocked everybody in the WWE, um, but always treated me good, so I never had a problem with him. But, you know, what goes around comes around. So um, if I was him, I mean, I don't know how you follow that. Right. So if, I, don't, I didn't see it, but I heard it last what, 30 seconds? Yeah, it was, uh, yeah. It was two, two and a half minutes. Uh, two and a half uh, minutes, okay. One-sided, not... Um, not an awesome performance, but still something that a lot of people were curious about and, and, and want to know what happens next. Do you think he'll fight again? Do you think they'll try to put him on the Ultimate Fighter television show? Do you think he'll go to Bellator, or is this a one-off and he's done? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, he still has a lot of name recognition because of his uh, success in the WWE. So I'm sure he has options, but I mean, you know, it's uh, why would you do that again? It's kind of like... Um, once you get, you know, that was pretty devastating. I'm sure that he had a hard time sleeping that night knowing he put in all that time and that so many people, because of his brand, were looking at him. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So that, those are the decisions he has to make. But whatever he does, I wish him well. Uh, um, make no mistake, going out there it made him, you know, just to do that, you know, you, you win a lot of... Uh, well, you get a lot of respect from a lot of people. That's a tough sport. So uh, my hat's off to him for trying, but if I were him, I'd, you know, I would do something else. Let's go to uh, top story number two. Ryback has changed his name to Ryback. Uh, we first saw this, or the first time I remember hearing someone do this, was the Ultimate Warrior back in the 90s. Uh, did you ever have any experience with anyone who had some sort of dispute about their name and they changed their name legally? Or is that something you ever really considered, changing your name or anything no, like that? No, I, I, I've always owned my name. And uh, um, thank God Vince never wanted to change it. You know, I was already an established commodity, thank God, I hope, when I first went there the first time. And then uh, he, they've never played around my name or my persona. We've had differences about, you know, my interviews and stuff like that, but never about my name. And so Ryback changed his name to what? To Ryback. You know, he's Ryan Reeves, but he's changed it to where his first name is now Ryback, so he can continue to use that name on the independence. Uh, oh, he legally changed his name. Yeah, he legally changed his name. Oh, so, wow, well, good. 
Well, um, I haven't heard, you know, how he's doing. I haven't seen much of him. Um, uh, if he's out there, I mean, he worked hard. I don't know what his problem was. I do, but I, I'm not going to comment on it. Um, but I hope he does okay. He's a nice kid. And, uh, you know, the WWE is not for everybody. Right. And he, he anticipated things that I don't think they had planned for him. And, uh, you know, which doesn't work out. It's like it's like our friend Alberto De Rio. I think he's one of the most talented guys in business. But uh, And he'll be our guest very soon. But he uh, he just couldn't uh, they just couldn't come to terms, so he's gone. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, what Ryback does independent of the WWE because uh, he, he was responsible for you know in his initial push he did a pay per view uh, in the fall against CM Punk and it drew mm-hmm. a really good number uh, for their Hell in a Cell uh, pay per view. From what I remember, it was probably Punk's uh, best pay per view as far as the number of buys. Really? Uh, so, so he had he had something once upon a time that the WWE was able to market, but you know, with that screw job finish, maybe some of the momentum left, and it just wasn't the same. But uh, who won that match? Uh, that's when they introduced the uh, the Shield, and uh, oh, they, that's right, yeah. And they okay. had the they did the screwy referee deal with Brad Maddox and that whole deal. So it was a a schmoz finish where Punk retained, and at the time he was. Uh, championing how long he had been champ because you know the current era people don't have long runs but let's do it let's go ahead and talk about runs in our top story number three so rick this past week at uh, backlash it was our first smackdown pay-per-view in a long long time uh, a brand specific show and two new champions coming out of this that we want to talk about uh, becky lynch who i think a lot of people uh, don't really understand y'all's relationship and know you know, what, how you think about Becky and what you think of Becky. And, and she finally won some gold in the WWE and became the SmackDown Ladies Champion. Kind of talk a little bit about your relationship with Becky Lynch and uh, her status as SmackDown well, Champion. Well, Becky and I are very close uh, through my through my daughter, Charlotte. Um, I would I would uh, I would say um, without thinking about it, that um, aside from some of Ashley's volleyball teammates in college that uh, Becky Lynch is her best friend. So I remember Ashley texted me, I have tears in my eyes, Dad. So happy for Becky. And, uh, you know, I think the world of her, you've met her. She's a special kind of person. And uh, she takes nothing for granted. She's just really a nice girl and very talented. And uh, uh, I was hoping it would happen, but I didn't know there was so many different, you know, um, thought process is going on but i'm happy for her i think the company is and uh so i have I mean, her family's awesome i've met her family when we've been overseas so she's a special girl and uh so happy for her so and i hope that she stays in that position for a while really a great person too always has a lot of time for my daughter and goes yeah. out of her way to make her feel special just a tremendous person and uh another friend of yours comes out of this making wrestling history AJ Styles becomes only the third man ever to hold the NWA title and the WWE title. Uh, yep. Buddy Rogers, the Nature Boy Ric Flair, and now the phenomenal AJ Styles. Uh, AJ's been on a little bit of a run, you know, holding the NWA title, the TNA title, the IWGP for New Japan, and now the WWE title. Where do you think this stacks up, AJ, amongst the all-time greats, Rick? Well, you, I'm such a fan of AJ Styles. It, it's hard um you know, to see past my friendship, but he is unlimited with skills. He's better now than he was at TNA. And I saw him have some matches with Kurt Angle at TNA that were really good, but he's actually gotten better. And, uh, I, I see him as, uh, you know, it, you know, time will tell. It's always, you know, it just, you can't say right now that he's going to be one of the greats. Uh, I mean, right now, as we speak, in my opinion, he's a great worker. But, you know, all time, it's going to be determined by time. And, uh, you know, the word great gets passed around way, way too easy. I mean, there are good people. There are people that are very competent. But uh, the word great gets passed around by he's he's in that category right now. If he stays healthy and can do this for a couple more years. 
he'll be one of the all-time greats. That's my take on it. Do you think uh, a lot of people, and I don't really like when people say it like this, they say, oh, so-and-so is the next this, and they relate it to a person. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're hearing a lot of conversation in recent years, uh, and, and now more than ever, that AJ Styles is the next Shawn Michaels. Do you see that? No, uh, I do. I, I see it, but it's not. It's not the same thing. Shawn Michaels. Um, if you look at Shawn's uh, charisma, and uh, it's you know when they were trying to uh, put AJ in a position of being a, a heel, um, it's just not him. You know, it is. Is AJ is just too nice a guy. Shawn Michaels. When he was in that heel, Sean could be a prick. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a whole different. His life is totally different in his lifestyle, but he, Sean could be a prick. And that's what, you know, people like you to be. I was a prick. I didn't care what anybody thought. I said what I thought, but I could back it up. But the, once again, that not saying AJ can't be Shawn Michaels, but that's a, that's a tall order. Remember, we had to call him to get him to come on the show the greatest of all time. So, I mean, Sean, where we are, you're the greatest of all time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, AJ, you got a ways to go. You're really good, but at the tall order, Sean Michaels, man. You know, I tell you what, though, what would make, what would convince me that AJ is in that place is if AJ could have a match like Sean did with The Undertaker. Actually, two of them. I'd, I'd love to see that match. Do you think that's... Also, I also want to see AJ see how he does with a guy like Brock Lesnar. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody wants to see that one. You know, I, I think that would be a phenomenal uh, main event at WrestleMania this next year. AJ and Brock? Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah, of course. Poor AJ. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying. Randy's got a concussion, though. I think it's from his match with Brock. <laughs> yeah, there is uh, a lot of that talk going around. Let's get yeah. to uh, top story number four. Uh, this is kind of a fun topic this week, Rick. Uh, John Cena has uh, made a post on Instagram that said, to be the man, you have to beat the man with a cartoon drawing of you. And then on Raw, uh, or SmackDown rather, comes out and talks about how holding the title 16 times and being 16 times world champion is his new goal in wrestling. Uh do you hope he gets there? Uh, and how fast and how soon do we start saying you're 21 or 22 time champion? Well, first of all, I text John. I love John. He's always, even when I'm not there, he throws my name out there, which keeps me keeps me in the public eye. Uh, I would be elated if John got that. Um, certainly, he's worked hard enough, and uh, it's never going to affect my legacy. I think the world, of John Cena, as a person, as a man. And uh, I'll actually be there. It's uh, after that event you got booked for me in uh, California. I'll be at that event. So I'll have to go by and see. Um, but, you know, I think the world, John. And uh, I think that uh, when I look at what he's done for the company, uh, and, of course, the company's done a lot for him, but uh, his work ethic is incredible. He's a great guy. He's a great ambassador. And... Uh, you know, if, he won, if he won that title for the 16th time, I'd be the first to congratulate him. Well, well, I don't think a lot of fans are going to feel that same way. I think that's one of the uh, the things that now people hold in high regard. You know, there was the Undertaker streak and Ric Flair 16 times. You know, we don't have a lot of numbers the way baseball does uh, or the way football does where people just throw around stats. Uh, but 16 times mm-hmm. is one that... Uh, I don't think a lot of people ever thought would would be passed, but maybe that's where they're headed with John Cena. We'll have to stay tuned to figure it out. Well, the thing you got to remember too, for him to do that, they'd have to they'd have to cut off the momentum on AJ. Right. And I don't see that happening either. So, that there, I mean, do I respect John and think that he would deserve that? Yes, but I don't think they're going to take the momentum away from AJ anytime soon. He's really. From the day he walked out, which really caught me by cigar, by surprise, he has been so well received by the fans. It's it's crazy. Well, we uh, we were well received by the fans this week for our Ask Nate concept. We're bringing it back. Uh, this is from the old Woo Nation days. Every now and again, mm-hmm. we would just take to Twitter and Facebook and say, "Hey, have you got a question for Rick 
We're going to answer your questions this week on the show, and that's what we're doing this week. Stay tuned. On the other side of the break, hashtag Ask Nate. We'll be right back on the Ric Flair Show. If you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. Woo! Don't miss a minute of the Ric Flair Show. Subscribe on iTunes now. In Ric Flair, who are you looking at the man? Woo! The Ric Flair Show. With an erection that is so rigid, you can strike matches on it. And now, more Ric Flair. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to bring back one of my favorite segments, uh, hashtag Ask Nate. We've actually taken to Twitter, and you, the listener, are in the driver's seat. All you had to do to participate was go ahead and throw us a question using hashtag Ask Nate. Uh, Scott Harrier on Twitter wants to know, uh, would love to know what was involved and what it was like filming the vignettes, the dusty parking lot, dream date, Teddy Long limo. Um, the, the attack that the horseman did on Dusty Roads that was filmed in a parking lot can you kind of carry us through whose idea that was, where you did it, any memories you have about shooting that? Well, we shot it in the parking lot of Jim Crocker Promotions, and um, the idea was uh, Dusty's, and, and he, as we've talked about, was a genius with stuff like that, way ahead of his time. And uh, it got a lot of heat, a lot of momentum, and uh, we, we, rode a, we rode on that angle and made a lot of money for over a year. It was phenomenal. At the uh, the end of that segment, uh, when you guys are attacking Dusty, um, I found it interesting, and this was kind of debated at the time, and I didn't realize this until recent years, uh, that Dusty says, make it good. Uh, like you know, And, and a lot of people kind of outsmarting themselves wondered, hey, was that supposed to be edited in there since Dusty was the booker? But, of course... I think the uh, the gist was, hey, if you're going to beat me up, if you're going to attack me, you better make it good so I can't just come back. Uh, yeah, exactly. Did you did you have any sort of conversation with anybody about that at the time, or was that something that was just not even on your radar? It wasn't even on radar. As a, and, as a matter of fact, until you just brought this up, I'd never heard that. Okay. But he he was a player. If we were going to do something, and, you know, slamming a guy's door or like a, a guy's head in a door in a cage or a guy's leg in a door. I mean, and Iron, you know, was a very physical, tough guy. So, you know, Iron, don't tell Iron to go after it, man, and get the heat. He did, and it worked <laughs> out great. Yeah, it's something that people are still going to talk about for a long time. Uh, mm-hmm. Very innovative at the time. Dallas Jacobson on Twitter tweets, not sure if anyone ever asked Rick before, uh, but does the Nature Boy believe in life on other planets and UFOs? That seems like a fun question to ask. Well, wow, most certainly. I've been told I'm from Pluto for years. <laughs> I can't certainly be from Earth. <laughs> no, no, nobody. There's nobody like me on on, on Earth. <laughs> I I, uh, I feel like Please. I'm not on Earth this morning. My check liver light is on. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to need to get a shot of B12 today. Yeah, yeah, and you hey, and you have two more days of it. And how are you going to feel tomorrow? Just on a on a side note, when Ole Miss kicks Alabama's ass again. Oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> you, you realize that you know in your latest attempt to jump bandwagons, and now that you're on the Harbaugh train in Michigan, that they have vi- video of him last weekend picking his nose and eating a booger. That that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna have video tomorrow of saving with tears in his eyes, and Ole Miss beats him for the second year in a row. It would be. And by the way, they beat you in Tuscaloosa last year. Now you're on the road to Ole Miss. Well, are you uh, going to stay home, or are you going to put yourself through the hurt? I'm not going to put myself through the hurt. And, and actually, this will be the third time that they beat us if they actually win. I know. I know. Uh, I, I just don't I, see it I'm, happening. I'm keeping track of it. You don't see it happening. Okay, well, of course not, because you're a homer. saving blind. Yeah, well, how could you not be? Look at all those titles. I mean, he's got 16 world titles down there at Alabama. Uh, that's, that <laughs> he, seems He familiar. doesn't have 16. Well, he's on his <laughs> way, though. He's on his way. <laughs> okay. Hey, let's... Uh, yeah, we know we agree. We have to have our fun. We've waited all summer long. Thank God football's back, so... We have something to and do by on the Saturdays way, again. You're going to be in the sidelines with me October 3rd, uh, Falcons-Panthers, man. <laughs> That'll be fun. In That's Atlanta, be it'll fun. be great. 
Uh, which territory? Matt Wright on Twitter wants to know which territory other than JCP could have had a shot against WWE if they changed with the times. Which territory? Uh, there was no territory big as as big as uh, Crockett. Um, we uh, actually the second biggest up territory besides Crockett would have been Florida Championship Wrestling, and we were all involved. Uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling, because it started going to Ohio, was big, but uh, Texas was just, you know, local. Uh, Portland was too small. Um, Calgary certainly wouldn't have worked. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, New Japan or, or All Japan was great, but, I mean, to go against the WWE, it, it, take, it would have taken a combined effort. And the fact that they didn't get together until too late. Actually, we were competing at Jim Crockett Promotions with WWE until we tried to promote um, east of the, or west of the Mississippi, which we talked about many times. Let's go to uh, Matt Wright. He has another question. Uh, who was a stiffer worker, Road Warrior Animal, Kevin Von Erich, or JBL? Oh, my God, Kevin Von Erich. Really? JB on Animal couldn't get Kevin started. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding? And Kevin was as big as they were, but uh, holy cow, Kevin, <laughs> uh, a nicest guy in the world, but he's a little unorthodox. And those barefoot kicks, man, they were in there. Good Lord. He used to love to run across the ring and kick you. I don't know what he thought he was doing, but <laughs> I would just close my eyes and pray. Every time I saw him coming. Uh, Answer Man on Twitter asks, what was your favorite time in St. Louis, not including... No, no, the- let, let me tell you a great Kevin Von Erich story. He's wrestling a wrestler by the name of Takachio. You remember him? No. In in St. Louis, Japanese guy, right? Uh, very good. And Kevin was up on the top rope and <laughs> going to drop kick him. And he he dropped himself, <laughs> drop kicked him so hard that he knocked him completely cold and they said to him, they said, what happened? I mean, what, how could you be? He said, the doors were open in the arena and the, and the wind blew me off the top of the turnbuckle. <laughs> 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 that, that's pretty good, isn't it? That's hilarious. <laughs> As the poor, poor Takaji was laying there out cold. <laughs> <laughs> From a drop kick off the top rope. That's phenomenal. Oh, yeah. I've seen it all, my friend. Uh, Answer Man on Twitter says, what was your favorite time in St. Louis, not including the Black Scorpion and not with Piper? Oh, Kennedy's Bar downtown on the landing. I had more fun at Kennedy's. Um, There was a great night in St. Louis on top of the Marriott when um, I gave the bartender uh, 200 bucks to show her her boobs. Um, And then... (laughs) We went back and sat down, and she came up to me about a half hour later and said they fired me. <laughs> I said, so what does that mean? She said, well, I, I mean, I said, I did my end. I gave you 200 bucks. You didn't have to show everybody your boobs. <laughs> hey, they were nice. They were, hey, they were nice boobs, too, <laughs> and she was good looking. But uh, the best times were at uh, either East St. Louis, but Kennedy's on the landing. Oh, my God. It was as good as the place in Chicago, the Snuggery. We had so much fun. Good Lord. That's phenomenal. St. Louis was a fun town. Yes, sir. Uh, but she had really nice boobs. I wish I had a picture to send you right now. I, I really wish they, you did, too. You, I've never heard you they, talk they, about they, boobs this they, far. That we, we could post on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't it wouldn't upset all of our listeners. I'll assure you that. I'm sure, but she was gorgeous. Uh, Mass Superstar on Twitter says, As a matter of fact, I think I, I think, as a matter of fact, I think I had... To comfort her that night to to get her over being fired. Oh goodness! Yeah, I just couldn't let her walk away all upset. So I think I just had to like take her under my wing and make sure she was okay until I left the next day. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I, I think uh, I think we need more details on that story, and we'll get them off air. Uh, okay. <laughs> hashtag ask Nate from the mass superstar. Great drinking stories, but do you have any about dusty roads, Tommy wildfire, rich or Ole Anderson? You know, I don't think we've ever told a partying story, with, but with Tommy rich on the, on the show before, do you have any, I, I never partied with Tommy. 
When I was wrestling Tommy, everything was very, very kayfabe. Okay. So I was never out with Tommy. Oh, yeah. I did have him out one night, and I missed a plane. I forgot about that. <laughs> I had Tommy Rich and Nick Patrick out one night in Columbus, Ohio, and I had to be in uh, San Antonio the next day for New Year's uh, matinee show against uh, Kerry, and I had to end, they ended up getting me a Learjet. <laughs> we did go up. We did stay out. I've been out with Tommy a couple times, but not that much. I mean, but Tommy was a great guy, and Nick Patrick also was awesome. So I pretty much had fun with everybody. I can't name too many people I didn't. Do you have any uh, fun Ole Anderson drinking stories? No, Ole didn't drink that much. One beer. No. Huh. No, huh. Ole, I, I, I don't, I can't say Gene didn't drink much, you know. We worked together, and then I went my way, and they went their way. Victor Loveless on Twitter says, Hey, Nate, if you could see Charlotte face any lady from the past, who would it be? So kind of a dream opponent for your daughter. Uh, if you it had would to... either, be, either, either be Lita or Trish. Yeah, I expected you to say one of those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is always a fun question uh, because occasionally you'll change the members up a little bit. Uh, Nick Cutrone on Twitter says, Hey, champ, if you could create a 21st century four horsemen, what current stars would you include? And they can be from any company. Um, you, you've answered this before, but I'm curious if that looks different now. I, I, got, I got asked that question over in uh, Manchester uh, yesterday by 2K people. Um, uh, I, you know, it, I couldn't pick the guys that would be the four horsemen. It was a different time. Um, and the thing that made us, uh, everybody could talk. Right. And everybody could work. Uh, I think what made us so successful was the mentality that we didn't have an ego about winning or losing. And that's pretty much lost in the business. Now people worry about their position. We knew, we knew every day how good we were. We didn't think about it. There was no argument. We knew there were people that were jealous of our situation, but being jealous and being able to outperform us was two different things. So it'd be hard to say, I mean, it'd be easy to say, in terms of people I like, the Shield, I'd love to go out with Ambrose. And um, Ambrose is, could be a horse from all day long. He loves to drink and have fun. He can work. <laughs> Roman's the same way. Seth Rollins, I have never been out with socially, but I mean, uh, Seth Rollins is a tremendous performer. I think Seth is, uh, you know, right there with Randy Orton. Hunter is the best performer in the company. Different style. And this, and I'm, not, I'm not putting him ahead of AJ by any means, but. Seth Rollins, I think you would agree, can really, can really bring it. Oh, absolutely! And, and coming back from that knee injury, he looks like a million bucks. Um, he's almost as handsome as I was when I was younger, <laughs> you know. So he he would be the carrot for us. He'd, he'd be our Barry Windham. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Um, what is your? Uh, I don't know how to say this guy's name. I'm going to try. Podinsky says, what is your greatest partying story in West Virginia, and what was it like traveling there as the champ in the 80s? Can you have fun in West Virginia? Is that allowed? Greatest partying story of all time, Great American Bash on tour. I wrestled Ricky Morton in the cage. We stole it. It was the Ant Road Wears Away, and uh, David Allen Cole was with us, and they, we brought the David Allen Cole show back to the Marriott Hotel. He played the four in the morning. And we had so damn many women. West Virginia's got the good-looking women. Huh. I'm not kidding you. Yeah, we had we had a lot of fun in Charles, West Virginia. Make no mistake, you can have fun in that town. But that that Marriott Hotel, I, I was just there about three months ago. They still talk about those days. <laughs> we used to have so damn much fun there. My God. Yeah, the Marriott in Charleston. We rock it out. Uh, John Matthew on Twitter has a question I've never heard asked before. Uh, hashtag ask Nate, was Luthez a bully? Uh, oh, I never wrestled Luthez. I've heard this. He always was nice to me and, and treated me very respectful because he, he knew that I could, he knew that I was actually a wrestler. Um, he didn't like working with gimmick guys and he would abuse those guys. I see. Uh, yeah. Brute Bernard told me that, <laughs> that Lou wouldn't give him anything because he, you know, Brute was a, a gimmick, but, uh, you know, a real nice guy. I love Brute Bernard. 
but you know, I just get around in the ring and all that. He he wouldn't give the guys he didn't have respect for an inch. That's pretty that's pretty well known. Uh, Matthew on Twitter says, "Would the four horsemen have worked?" But that, 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 that doesn't make him a bully. He just he was in control of his destiny. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Uh, Matthew on Twitter wants to know, hashtag ask Nate, would the four horsemen have worked back in the eighties in the WWF storyline wise? Uh, obviously. Oh, hell yes. Really? Oh yeah. We would have stole it. Are you kidding me? Well, I'm just, oh, yeah. I'm curious why you think that, because it seems like a lot of your promos and stuff at the time wouldn't have been exactly the type of promos that they would have wanted on their kid friendly product. Uh, but you still think you could have? Oh, you're saying you're saying because of the fact that they were. Uh, well, you know what you you know what you might be right. I'm thinking. I I thought you were asking me if I thought that we would be a commodity. Oh um, sure, yeah. I, the answer is we would be a commodity. But you're probably right. They wouldn't have let us uh, say eighteen to twenty eight at the Marriott. <laughs> no boyfriends, no husbands. <laughs> but uh, looking back on what you like in this business, and no one is smarter than you. You're like the Dave Meltzer. Um, you know, that was the stuff you loved. And I'm sure that you would love that much more than watching Honky Tonk walk out with a guitar for six seconds. <laughs> uh, I'm not arguing that at all. Uh, Stink, yeah, you, uh, you, 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 you would have been right there, right in the middle of it all. Oh, for sure. We, we, would, have, we would have burned a hole in your credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, stink eye on Twitter asks who taught you the art of blading? Uh, you don't know that we've ever art, really art, talked about art Nielsen. Art Nielsen. I don't know that name. Can you catch everybody up about him? Uh, he was an old timer. Um, you can Google him. Um, he just, um, it was Roanoke, Virginia. I just gotten there and they wanted me to do it that night. And he taught it. I hung around art a lot. He was a rugged guy, tough, tough guy. Um, I loved him a lot. We loved to We exercised together. He did free squat crunches, the wheel and all that stuff. And, uh, he taught me how to make it and put it on my finger. That was the first night. Wow. And I've taught a hundred guys since. <laughs> so what, uh, didn't you tell me once upon a time you were kind of superstitious about the type of blades you would use? Yeah. I, I like the Johnson and Johnson. The Gillette, I, I I have used Gillette, but I like the Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> I like it. Just like I, if I don't have Johnson and Johnson tape, I'm superstitious too. Uh, Dave on Twitter asks hashtag Ask Nate, What was the best angle idea that never made it to TV, and what was the worst angle that did make it to TV that you were involved in or that you were booking? Uh, the worst angle that made it to TV. Um, God, I don't know. I just, just give me a bad one I, off the top of your head. What comes to your mind? Yeah. Well, when you say the bad angle, I didn't like the Sid vicious angle. I didn't like the Paul, uh, Romo angle with the horseman. Um, if you think about it, that was just, that was just, it wasn't us, not even close. Um, you think about Dean Malenko and Mongo, Mongo fit, and I mean Dean Malenko, Chris Benoit, Arn. I mean, we all got along so well. Long comes Sid. I mean, just you know, we prided ourselves on our in ring on our in ring ability. Um, Romo failed miserably, as did Sid. Um, you know, which is just it's nothing personal. It just it is what it is. Um, as far as angles that made it to TV that fell apart, we just talked about the other day. I think the worst thing I've ever seen was the one with uh, uh, on Flair for the Gold with um, Shockmaster. Yeah, I mean that was just, I felt terrible. He's uh, there is really a nice guy, but that that was the end, one and done. It was live, so there was no way no way to go back and fix that. So. Um... I don't see the problem with Oli when Oli was booking, he thought he just put anybody in there as a horseman. Does that make sense? But I mean, he, what did you say when they when they revealed Romo that night? Uh, I didn't expect that to be sure. Yeah. Um, it, but isn't the isn't the backstory to that? Blanchard was supposed to be there, and then at the last minute it fell apart, and you guys were just scrambling and 
that was it, or was there more thought put into it than that? No, well, I, I don't know the backstory. I don't remember Tully not being a, what Where was Tully the time that he wouldn't have been there? Uh, he had been to WWF and had kind of been out of the re- uh, out of wrestling uh, on the mainstream with the major companies for a little bit. And I thought the story was he had a deal to come back and then either a, uh, a drug test, uh, threw that off or uh, no, there was the contract amount. He assumed it would be for a much greater amount. Uh, he was insulted with a low ball offer and, uh, decided not to come in. So instead they just thought, well, Hey, we've been teasing that this is the last horseman and we're going to reveal the last horseman. Let's just put it with Roma or that was what I was yeah. led to believe. Well, it threw me up. I, I mean, I like to think I can remember almost everything. I do remember the reference to the drug test and the contract issue, but um, I, I don't ever remember being consulted or asked uh, about Paul Romo coming in. And I it was nothing. Well, I liked Paul personally, but he just wasn't he wasn't in that deal. It just didn't fit. So let me ask. Um, you know, we've never really talked about it. I don't think. Are, are your two least deserving, uh, least favorite? Horsemen, you know, and we're talking kayfabe, of course, Sid and Paul Roma. Oh, yes, for sure. Um, what was your relationship? This is not an Ask Nate's. This is a Conrad asking. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know why I just referred to myself in third person there. Hey, uh, what was your relationship like with Sid after the whole incident he had with Arn? I never talked to him again. Really? Nope. So even when you guys were in WCW at the end, uh, it was a head nod, and that was it. Y'all, you just went your own way. Yeah, it, was a, it was it was an insult to Iron that they even brought him back. We were in Baltimore. They announced he was going to be there. It was an insult to Iron. You know, Iron never talked to him. So I mean, just um, the argument. Arn, I was in bed in England when the argument started, but Iron was sticking up for me because Sid was telling me how Arn. And everybody in the bar that I was too old to be there. And Iron said, you know, fuck you. That's the whole story. Um, do you, where do you? So when, we, when we got back to the States, you know, I told Bischoff, hey, uh, yeah, if you fire Iron, you fire me. I don't care about Vicious, but if I don't fire Iron, you're firing me. So the Iron came back. So there was talk you know? that he was going to be fired for that incident. Who, Arn? Yeah. They did fire him for about two days. Oh, I didn't and know. I said, that. you fire him, I'm, you won't see me around. I got news for you. And then the irony of that was that they put me in the match. The match was supposed to be Vader and Sid, and they fired Sid, and I wrestled Vader. In, what was that, 93? Yeah, at Starcade. Yeah. Um, in, in, in Charlotte, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of your better matches, I hope, for us to uh, actually sit down and review that one one day. Yeah. Well, all my kids were there, my mom and dad. The ride in the limo with Gene Okerlund. It was really cool the way they did it. The way know? they and, built uh, it up, I agree. Huh? Yeah, it was very nice. And Gene, of course, is the ultimate <laughs> pro. Um, it was one of those deals, you know, Leon didn't want to drop the belt, so he had to test me. Harley was screaming at me, hit him back. So I had to start back but you know that's never a position you want to be in but you know um i like leon personally but he tried to be a bully you know it didn't work you know and ultimately it, trying to bully people it doesn't work out for you look at the deal with orndorff that was that'll that'll follow him around the rest of his life uh here's a question that i've never heard before this comes from jbl cena fan on twitter Hashtag Ask Nate. Scott Hall has said that he told Vince not to give you the WWF belt because you left WCW with theirs. Had you heard that story before? No. Has anybody ever even mentioned that, hey, this this guy may be a liability if we put the belt on him since he left WCW? Or did everybody understand that was an extenuating circumstance? I have never heard that, and everybody understood that. That was never a conversation. But, and... All, if, if you look back in history, all Heard had to do was write me a check. Right. Which I ultimately got from Bill Watts. He could have had the belt. He just, you know, was so arrogant. And ultimately, 
you know, <laughs> look what happened to him three weeks after I was gone. Yeah, he's still flipping pizza somewhere. <laughs> uh, so- all, I, all I said to him, I said, hey, write me a check. I'll fly to Columbus. I'm in Charlotte. I'll drop the belt to Barry Wyndham and we go. He said, fuck you. I'm sending Doug, uh, um, Doug Dillinger over to pick up the belt. Well, Doug's a policeman in Charlotte, my friend. I said, good. Send him all you want. It's my belt. You got a forty grand in a bank in my name from the NWA title. I got this. You want it? Pay for it, and we're all good. He he gave me that same old thing. He you know tried to bully me, and I said, "Well, next time you see the belt, I called Vince and I said FedEx, it'll be there." And the next thing you saw, two days later, Bobby Heenan had it on TV. <laughs> Had you uh, had you actually worked that out already? Like, um, in terms of you know, you sent the belt before you really had a deal. No, yeah, I did. I had no deal worked out with him. I just called him and said, "I got fired here. Are you still interested in me?" He said, "Hell yeah!" I said, well, "Good, well, it's it's me, and I got somebody with me." He said, "Who?" I said, "I got the belt." <laughs> wow. He said, <laughs> "Overnight it to me." So you know him, right? He ran with it, the real world champion. But that's all I mean. I mean, it's so strange. Yes, Ted Turner, let me tell you, was a great guy. But the people that he put in charge of running that wrestling company, Jack Petrick and Jim Hurd, they didn't have a clue. I mean, and they they were trying to screw me from day one. That's why Jimmy Crockett and I have never talked. They couldn't have sold the company without me. I mean, that was the deal. And Blair Schmidtfelder, you can Google him was the guy that told me that. I said, what do you mean? I I, I, I never, I, I had to go walk in the door and start a whole, I didn't have a contract. It expired. And they couldn't have sold the company without me. So, you know, and Crockett never told me. Charlie so Ross. that's the deal. Charlie Ross. I, I mean, I could have booked myself a $3 million deal. I mean, which, you know, I'm not, that's not the way it was, but no one to go, I didn't, you know, that's, that's when my life started to become uncomfortable because I'm a guy that I like to just go to work. I don't like conflicts. And when business became politics, that was the most political thing I'd ever been involved in my life, you know, and people trying to screw with you, you know, for their own personal gain. I didn't do that, you know, and I knew the guys were mad when I left, but you know, at some point in time, you got to take care of yourself. And, uh, even when I went to see Vince, I told him what I made and he didn't have guaranteed contracts then. And I said, uh, he said, I'll make you more. And, I, and he got up and shook my hand, and I made 130000 more than I made my, the year before with uh, WCW. So was kept the, his word. Was the schedule crazier with Vince at the time than it was? Um... Oh, it was great. Are you kidding? It, 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 people thought it was crazy. I mean, I'm traveling with, think about this now. I'm traveling with DiBiase, Kurt Henning, the Road Warriors. The Nasty Boys, Undertaker, Davy Boy, Brett, Randy. Um, <laughs> look at the list of guys that were there. Very Darso. I mean, we had the best time, man. I mean, I've always, it's we, we worked our ass off for every day, gone 40 days at a time. But, you know, we, uh, Terry Taylor, I mean, we just, <laughs> we rocked it up, man. And working there was so easy because those guys were over. I mean, you know, and uh, I got to work with, in a, in a, what, a year, a long period, I worked with Bret Hart, Kurt Henning, um, Randy Savage, um, who, who am I missing here? Um, the Warrior a couple times. Um, Razor Ramon. I mean, huh? Razor Ramon. I, I only worked with him one time. Oh, that tag match, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, we were partners. Yeah, not, not I worked with him in a in a cage match when it fell apart. But um, you know, it just it was easy, and uh, we were. Oh, and I worked with Hulk too. I mean, how tough, how easy was that, right? You know, I just had a ball. Oh, and and Roddy Piper. Jeez, are you kidding? Who couldn't have a good time on that run? And the thing of it is, it was so much more professionally run than WC than uh, WCW at that time. I was glad to get away from it and get back into the position of being where people are professional and conduct themselves professionally. 
And Vince McMahon is a take-no-shit cowboy, man. If you worked hard for him, he took care of you. Simple as that. Charlie Ross on Twitter uh, wants to know, what city had the wildest ring rats? Wow. <laughs> Jesus, let me think. Well, Greensboro was in the top five. Chicago, for sure, top five. Uh, Norfolk, Virginia, because of all the influx of flight attendants staying at the same hotel. Um, oh, Baltimore. The Safari Club, are you kidding me? Um, Tokyo, Japan. Really? You like Asian women, they were everywhere. Me, I want to love you long time, nature boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and FYI, Dallas, Texas wasn't bad either. Those tight-fitting jeans, those cowboy boots, those blind chicks. They're all looking for a big horse to ride. <laughs> and Nate was there. <laughs> my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, my saying is to be, I don't wear blue jeans. I don't wear cowboy boots. Never worn a big buckle. But every woman in Texas calls me the all-around cowboy. <laughs> 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 Which I was. <laughs> uh, Rob on Twitter says, we all know you worked every big city there is, but what are some of your favorite smaller towns? For example, Pensacola. Do you have any little small oh, God. towns? Really the, like? Hilton, the Hilton and Pensacola was fabulous. Oh, yeah. I always had fun in Pensacola. There used to be a bar at the Hall of the Inn called Rodeo. <laughs> are you kidding me? Yeah, that's, they're everywhere. In those days, women were everywhere. Good Lord. <laughs> you can't blame a guy like me for just falling off the wagon once or twice in my life. God, it was, it was just, it was just premium stuff everywhere. Hey, can you tell the story? We've never talked about this on the air, but can you tell the story about the time you got snowed in around a Starcade and you were in a bar with a chick playing piano and there was some NFL writer there? No, no, no. Yeah, it was the best story of all time. So Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm wrestling there, snowstorm, and all the guys had to drive back to Kansas City. It's a Kansas City territory. So I go over, uh, and I said, guys, I'm staying here. I'll fly back tomorrow. I'm not going to drive it home in a snowstorm. So I went, they took me to the old hotel, and I walked in. Uh, Jana Lewandowski is her name. I still remember it. <laughs> and uh, so, um, <laughs> Uh, the bar was empty, and so this chick is playing the piano, and she's a bartender, and God, she was gorgeous. And uh, so I'm sitting there with a guy, Pete, one of the executive writers for Sports Illustrated, and he was there to cover the Nebraska game that week, right? Well, the next week, they were playing OU. So, you know, I went to work on He and I got drunk, and then I went to work on her, you know, trying to get her. She was smoking, man. And... uh but they had no clue who I was. I really didn't care. So um, um, she, she knew in the morning as I left who I was. That's all that mattered. So anyway, <laughs> I, said, I said to her, here's the deal. If OU beats Nebraska, you come to Atlanta next week. And uh, so she did. So she flew. We flew her into Atlanta, man. She's the one that uh, you may have to edit this. You used to say to me, <laughs> <laughs> this was the greatest sign. She was a verbal masseuse. She'd say, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you would tell this and, story. And then, and then she would say, Stop, stop, stop. I'd say, What? Just stop, stop. And I go, Stop. Then she'd go, Why are you fucking stopping me? You old son of a bitch. And then, and then she would say to me, do I, need, do I need to talk to you in a foreign language? Stop. She was fucking psycho. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> and with that incredible weapon, you ever heard that before? Oh. Uh, I think I there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> we are off the rails. People, people want to know if I had any fun in my life. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 if this show doesn't get ready, nothing will. Uh, oh, my God. It feels weird to ask you a wrestling question now. I don't want to. You know, that relationship went on until the day I tried to borrow 25 grand from me. And I had to shut that down. <laughs> Then I ran into her in Houston two years later, and she's the one that stole the belt, went home without it. When I couldn't find it. Oh, uh, yeah. Good Lord. Jay, <laughs> I don't know how we're going to put this back together, but here we go. Uh, James McDonald on Twitter, why was Barry Windham inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame with the Four Horsemen instead of Ole or Lex Luger? Um, real simple. Ole they burnt the bridge with Vince McMahon years ago. They said terrible things personally about him. Uh, just it's Ole's arrogance, which you're, everybody's aware of. And I think that thing with, uh, well, first, Barry was the ultimate guy in that position. And I think the misfortune of the uh, stuff with um, with Elizabeth and uh, the, the ha- unhappy ending uh, with those two in that relationship, I uh, kind of eliminated Lex for a while from that position. But Barry Wyndham was, uh, um, Barry Wyndham is one of the top 10 or 12 workers in the business at that point in time. Uh, I think you'll agree. Oh, absolutely. I, I think uh, 86 and 87, um, mm-hmm. Barry Wyndham, you can put up against almost anybody. He was a six foot six, 250 pound steamboat. Yep, it's really pretty good. amazing when you think about it. But yeah, it was. It was tremendous. Uh, TLT on Twitter asks, who won the fight backstage at WCW, Roddy Piper or Kevin Nash? I heard them both say they won, but you were there. There was never a fight. That, that's been going on for years. There was never a fight. Verbal. That was it. Uh, Brian Parsons has a good question online. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was in Boston, Massachusetts. And Piper and I had wrestled uh, Scott Hall and uh, Kevin, and uh, uh, Roddy forgot a couple spots. You know how it is in the business, and they came in and cussed him out and all that. But there was never a fight. Uh, Brian Parsons wants to know who arranged the travel, the flights, and the schedule back in the day. Of course, I think everybody knows WWE has a big travel department now. But what was uh, protocol, you know, with Jim Crockett? Or when you were a touring NWA champion, how did that scheduling of the travel happen? Uh, it all happened through, a, well, for me as a champion, through Jim Barnett, okay. who was the secretary treasurer of the NWA. Yeah, and then later on, uh, I can't think of the travel girl's name um, at WCW. Um, God, I'm drawing a blank. I can see her, but I can't remember her name. <laughs> <laughs> Jer- Jared on Twitter God. wants to know what are your thoughts on the great Muda, both personally and professionally? Fantastic. Great guy, personally, tremendous worker. Uh, I've always thought the world of him when he first, when he, he loved me. Cause when he first came here, you know, those, those guys, when they've never been here, right. He came over here and of course I had to, he was a handsome guy. It wasn't hard to get him, uh, in the places he wanted to be. <laughs> but it was a friendship that he took on. It's kind of like Fujinami and Tenru. I got those guys that came over here. And, you know, I I treated those guys like I did the midgets. <laughs> if you wanted me. I took them everywhere. I had so much fun with them. And it was so much respect. And uh, Fujinami to this day and I are very close. And he was a great performer. Muda and I are very close. And he is great. And uh, Tenru... Uh, I think he has a little bit of a uh, throat cancer issue, but Tenor and I are very close to this day, too. So those guys don't forget. They remember the people that were nice to him. And, uh, you know, why wouldn't I be? What, what you know, what else to do? It, uh, it was a lot easier to get those guys fixed up with chicks than it was Cowboy Lang. Hey, it's your boy, give me leg, give me leg, give me leg. <laughs> little legs were shaking on the front seat. <laughs> <laughs> For all of you that don't know Cowboy Lang, Google him. And on next week's version, I'll tell you a story about Cowboy Lang. Uh, we, and, <laughs> we, we lost uh, we lost Lord Littlebrook this week. Uh, do you have? Oh, any... I didn't know that. No. Yeah, he was eighty-seven years old. 
Uh, I knew the Lord very well. He was in St. Joe, Missouri, correct? Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but yeah. I, I do know yeah. that um... he, he he booked all the uh, young all the uh, midgets. Great he, guy. He loved me. Do you have any fun Lord Littlebrook stories? No, I never parted with Littlebrook. I I took care of Cowboy Lang and uh, Little Tokyo. <laughs> that was rough. <laughs> Cowboy Lang was the best. I would take him in the bars, and he'd go in and uh, in the bathroom and take off his clothes and come walking out and. Uh, you know, he could tuck his penis in his cowboy boots, so it was pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so just having fun. I mean, just life was good back then. Obviously, things like that never take place now um, But because um, social media is different. But those guys, they worked so hard. They worked as hard as we did and made no money. So I was actually I'm glad I had the opportunity to spend some money on them and take them out and have fun with them. So that's all it was. Uh, Deplorable Trash asks, was there anyone who could hang with Nate after dark? Is, if so, who was his drinking and partying la- uh, lady-loving rival? Uh, Piper, maybe? No, no, no. He was, I'm telling you, Roddy didn't he, – he was more concerned with having a good time. Uh, um, he, was, he was a scientist. Um, I understand. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, after hours drinking hmm, and with women, um, wow. Oh, Christ. Barry Wyndham. Are you kidding me? <laughs> how, how could I forget? We just had his name on the tip of my tongue. Are you kidding? Jesus. He was the all time carrot. I said it at my hall of fame induction. I moved from living vicariously from him to Dave Batista. <laughs> with evolution um joseph frost uh wants to know if you could come back for one more match at wrestlemania who would you like to go against well i would love for john cena to win the title and them to give me six months to get ready because i could wrestle again very easily but i would need six months uh just for cosmetics and a couple months of really everyday training in the ring at the performance center. I would love that for it to happen. I don't think it ever will, but I could be in that kind of shape if I was, you know, got the heads up in the next month or so. Uh, Don Siebert on Twitter asks, is there anyone in the business that you never had an opportunity to wrestle that you wish you would have? No, I wrestled everybody except for John in a single. And of course, the shield, the new guys and that. So um, there's nobody I missed. I mean, I, I think that's what makes my career unique is that I wrestled everybody. I mean, we're talking about Stan Hansen, Brody, and, you know, a, a very few guys ever had that opportunity. I mean, from Carlos Colon, I mean, you name it, I wrestled everybody. Uh, Jack Veneno, all the Japanese guys. Um, you know, we talked about it with uh, Animal last week. Uh, just, I didn't miss anybody. But I, I think that's one of the things that's worked for me and it makes me different than anybody else uh, in the business. Uh, WWE front row asks, who was the most fun to travel with on your most recent time with WWE? You're talking about his last run with, with Charlotte. Yeah. uh, You you were, you've, you've had an opportunity to hang out with a lot of the boys on the roster now. Oh, the Usos and Roman for sure. The, Uso, uh, the Usos, Dean Ambrose, and Roman. Good deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're they're a lot of fun. Yep. I was going to, I don't want to mention, I can't tell, I don't want to tell the story because it'll get somebody in trouble. But, yeah, those guys are great guys. Uh, Antonio. And I'm, and I'm not talking about anything to do with women. We're just talking about drinking. Hanging out. And, and hanging out after a long day, yeah. Uh, Antonio on Twitter asks, did Rick ever give any input on the Ashley Schaefer character on Eastbound and Down? Uh, that's the Will Ferrell character. Uh, yeah. I don't know. No, I got, I got invited, show. uh, to a tape and they shot it in Shelby where my son, uh, uh, David lives and, uh, they invited me out there. Um, uh, I know Will Ferrell's a, um, a big fan and a really nice guy, but I never got, they never consulted me. Um, but it was flattering to see him take my gimmick and have fun with it. So yeah, it was very cool, but no, I, I never had any 
anything to do with, with I never consulted at all. Uh, John on Twitter wants to know, does Nate still have a soft spot for the state of Minnesota? I don't think well, a lot of people even realize that that's where you grew up. I think everybody oh, yeah. associates I, you with I, Charlotte. As a matter of fact, Raw is there. Uh, one of my close friends, as I told you, Conrad, died uh, about two months ago, and I was unable to go to the funeral um, because I had to go to Chicago for, um, I can't remember, you were there with, with Kansas for Ashley's match. Yeah. Um, was can't remember what it was in payback. Chicago. It was a pay, payback pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I wasn't able to make the funeral, but I'm trying to go back to October 23rd on a Friday because they're going to have another memorial service for him. But, yes, I love Minneapolis. I've got so many great memories of my childhood there. Um, I mean, Gene Oakland's from there. You know, I still talk to Greg Gagne and Brunzel. And, uh, you know, I grew up there and had a great time. It was a, it's a phenomenal city. It's cold, but they have the downtown pretty much totally in glass in the winter. So you just walk on, on walkthroughs, on the walkways. But uh, in the summer, it's absolutely beautiful. And I love Minnesota, but I wouldn't leave uh, Atlanta or North Carolina to go back for the five months of, of actually the seven months of hell. <laughs> it's cold. Uh, I've gotten, I've got, I got off a plane one time. I'd been in San Juan and I was going home to my parents' house for Christmas. I got off the plane and it was 75 below wind chill. Oh my gosh. 75 below wind chill. Well, I mean, the temperature was like 30 below, right? Which is not uncommon. But the wind, it was so cold, it was 75 below. Yeah, it was really cold. Uh, what should the championship match be for the women at WrestleMania 33? So if you had the fantasy book, you had the armchair book right now, WrestleMania 33, what should the women be doing? Well, I don't know because I can't uh... – I, I mean, uh, as far as Charlotte is programmed right now, she's wrestling Sasha next, uh, which will be the best of three. Um, and I don't know what she's going to be doing after that. I, You know, you want to say that would be um, the, the, the magic book, and you would think would be the WWE Raw brand champion versus the SmackDown brand champion. Um, but then... You get back in that position, and one of them's got two belts, and that doesn't help the the brand from the other one. So there'll probably just two championship matches. I don't know, um, but they've earned so much respect, and they're so highly thought of that I'm sure they'll have a good position on the card. I mean, after the performance last year at WrestleMania uh, with uh, Sasha, uh, Becky, and Charlotte, um, it's going to be hard not to put them position them correctly because i thought they stole the show last year no i agree it was a great match uh two more questions and then we'll wrap up this edition of ask an h nunya on twitter asks what teams are going to the super bowl this year uh anybody who listens to this show knows that uh you are 24 7 uh watching espn so you probably seattle have seattle and the seattle and the patriots okay so there it is i yeah. can't i can't seattle, argue seattle with looks tough and the patriots I mean, I was in shock that they beat the Cardinals last week. Did you think that would happen? I figured that that, that, that if they started out, and tomorrow the Patriots play, um, they've got a pretty good game. I, but it's not pretty, it wasn't not as tough as the Cardinals. Well, they play Miami Sunday, so you know the kid played well. Belichick is undoubtedly the greatest coach in the history. I mean, he's right there with Bill Parcells and. All those guys, he just has done a phenomenal job. I mean, you know, the, oh, you know, I'll tell you what, if it's not uh, the Patriots, I think the Steelers look really tough. Antonio Brown is just playing phenomenal. I mean, it's just unreal. Yeah, that should be and his I best year. I love Ben. Out, well, I'm good friends with Ben. A lot of respect for him. I I don't see it. Uh, I don't see them. Um, I, I don't. It's either going to be Pittsburgh or New England. That's my take. All right, last one. Uh, we get a lot of questions about the this guy. Uh, Rob on Twitter, the best Arn Anderson story you can share. Obviously, um, we don't want to get anybody in trouble. So, best Arn Anderson story you can share. 
the best Darn Anderson story I can tell, um, there are so many. Um, I just think it's important that people understand that he was a great worker, um, a great talker, and I mean great in both categories. And he had a sense of humor second to none. Um, and he kept everybody laughing. He, through the hard times, I mean, the greatest stories for me, we'd be on that Falcon 10 flying across the country and Luger and he would get into a joust and, you know, Luger would say, you're a human Super Bowl. And Arn would say, I've told the story times, you're an orthodontist dream. If I could have those, if I could have, <laughs> if I could have those front teeth, I could, if I had those front teeth of yours, I could make him into pro handle revolvers. <laughs> 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 it was brutal. I mean, just unreal. And then he would imitate Lex, you know, every time Lex would go punch, he'd give me, give us, give himself the Hong Kong. Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was funny as shit. But, um, no, just, he's a great guy. I mean, there's so many, we're not, people always want to think that we did something bad every night. He just laughed and had fun and drank. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know? <laughs> no, no drugs, there's not. Drinking, surviving. I mean, um, I know one night we were all drinking and uh, um, Aaron had to catch a flight to Honolulu. And this is, uh, and so <laughs> he had Dave, the limo driver, come up and sleep in his room <laughs> to make sure he didn't leave. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. And that was the trip where we'd had Dave for four days and, and Aaron was going to Honolulu with Aaron. And uh, we got word on Wednesday that Dave died. <laughs> Running with us for four days was, was not easy. Oh, man. I can't imagine. Well, we, well, speaking of surviving, you survived another episode of Hashtag Ask Nate. Uh, we answer usually one of these questions every week. This week we did a whole show dedicated to it. But we're not done yet. On the other side of the break, we've got the voicemail of the week and this week in history. And this week in history was a big one. Stay tuned to the Ric Flair Show here on MLW Radio. We want to thank our sponsors here on the show. And specifically, we want to thank Mac Weldon. Bruce Pritchard's rocking some. Ric Flair's rocking some. I've got my share. Mac Weldon is something you need to look good, to feel good, to smell good, to dance all night. Ric Flair approved. It's everything you need from t-shirts, underwear, sweats. You want to look good. You want to feel good. You want to style and profile. You need some Mac Weldon in your life. It's M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N. MacWeldon.com. And be sure to use promo code code flair to get 20 percent off of your order it really is that easy you're going to be glad you checked it out they even guarantee it if you don't like the stuff keep it they'll refund your money don't forget to check out macweldon.com pick up some cool gear for yourself and get a great deal but most importantly support the rick flair show which is brought free to you every week check out macweldon.com and use promo code flair for an additional 20 percent off your entire order when rick flair's in town showtime hit me rick's on tour man and he's coming to your town if you haven't been keeping up, it's easy to do so. Go to rickflairshow.com and click the Appearances tab at the very top of the page. Next weekend, he's back in Flair country, Morganton, North Carolina, on Thursday, September 26th at 6 p.m. He's going to be at the Colette Street Recreation Center. Don't miss him the very next day in Raleigh, North Carolina. He's at the famed Dorton Arena for Big Time Wrestling. That's on Friday, September 23rd. And then the next day, more Big Time Wrestling in Flair country, this time in Spartanburg, South Carolina. That's on Saturday. September 24th at the Memorial Auditorium right there in Spartanburg. And then the very next day, he's going to the Best of the Best Showcase in Corpus Christi, Texas. This is at the American Bank Center on September 25th. Don't miss the Nature Boy when he comes to your town. Go to RicFlairShow.com and click the Appearances tab at the top of the page. You're listening to the Ric Flair Show. Is there anything I need to know about you? You're talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, Kiss stealing, woo, wheeling, dealing, limousine right, jet flying, son of a gun, and I'm having a hard time holding these alligators down. Woo, woo! And now, more Ric Flair. It's time for this week in history on the Ric Flair Show. Woo! Brought to you by MidAtlanticGateway.com. Dick Bourne and David Chappell are celebrating the memories of Jim Crockett promotions every day at MidAtlanticGateway.com. Ladies and gentlemen, through the year 2000, we're going to do exactly what all of you across this nation have asked. 
Arn Anderson, bring back the horsemen. But I feel it fair to tell you, I'm not going to be responsible for what happens next. Because we don't wear white hats. We're not nice guys. And I can tell you this, heads are going to roll. So, I've said it. Be careful what you wish for, because now you have it. Oh, what a goof. What a goof. You know, I get accused of getting racked in the head a few times and having a little touch of Alzheimer's. My God, I almost forgot the fourth horseman. Rick Flair, go down here. Here we go. I'm almost embarrassed by the response, but when I see this, I know that the 25 years that I spent trying to make you happy every night of your life was worth every damn minute of it. Now, somebody told the horsemen were having a party tonight in Greenville. Could that be true that the most elite group that Eric Bischoff said was dead is alive and well? Bischoff! This might be my only shot. And I gotta tell you, I'm gonna make it my best. Is this what you call a great moment in TV? It's wrong because this is real. This is not bought and paid for. It's a real life situation. Just like the night in Columbia, South Carolina, when you look at me, tears in my eyes, and said, God, that's good, TV. It was real. Art Anderson passed the torch. It was real, damn it. You think Sting was crying in the dressing room like I was on TV if it wasn't real? This guy. My best friend is one of the greatest performers to ever live, and you, you squashed him in one night. Then you get on the phone and tell me, disband the horsemen, they're dead. Disband the horsemen. Me, you know what? I looked at myself in the mirror the next day and I saw a pathetic figure that gave up and quit. And for that, I owe you, the wrestling fans, I owe these guys an apology because it won't happen again where we are. Yeah. No, you're not cheating. You're an overbearing asshole. 
That's right. They're an obnoxious, they're an obnoxious, overbearing ass. Abuse of power. You. Abuse of power. Cut me off. You will it's never, ever wrestle with Abuse of power. You suck. You are hit your gut. Cheat, you're a scam. You are a no good son of a bitch. Fire me. I'm already fired. Fire me. I'm already fired. All right, Rick, this week in history, this is one of the biggest moments in wrestling history, certainly in WCW and Ric Flair and Four Horsemen history. It's September 14th, 1998. And after a long hiatus away from WCW, Ric Flair returns to Monday Night Nitro uh, with Arn kind of being the master of ceremonies, putting together the Four Horsemen again. It's your return to Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, the fans just got to hear the impassioned promo you cut on Eric Bischoff. Kind of catch everybody up about what was going on behind the scenes that led to that moment. Well, it's very simple. I'd sat out almost a year and... Uh... WCW had sent me a check each week, even though I didn't have a contract in place. Um, but if I cashed the check, it would uh, it would mean that I was accepting their conditions. So I ate the checks. I kept them there. Um, but I had come out of pocket about $230,000. You know, the kids were young. They were in private school then. And... Uh, um, actually my friend, John, um, I'm drawing a blank. John Taylor, the attorney said to Rick, you know, you can just sit this out. You'll be rich because Turner always pays because I sued them too. And, uh, uh, or you can go back and, uh, you know, eat a little crow, but you'll be back at work or you can sit home, you know, the rest of your career. So ultimately I made the right decision to go back. Um, I was miserable within a month later because I was lied to and deceived again, but, um, I got the money and, uh, not the millions I would have gotten from the lawsuit because as we've discussed, you can't publicly say you're going to break somebody when you're the president of a company like for Turner Broadcasting, which he did break my family, break me, da 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 da. Everybody knows that story. So. Um, but that moment was phenomenal. It was very heartfelt and I didn't miss a beat. Um, the reaction from the fans, Greenville's always been a great market for me. Um, so respectful for the years there. Um, and to be in the, iron, in the ring with Iron and Mongo and that was very cool. And, uh, you know, we were a featured commodity again, just, you know, for that night. But, you know, the problem is, is that everybody else looking around, they hate People hated those moments that were so real and so much bigger than what was going on because we weren't part of the product. If that makes sense? Well, uh, who, who do you mean when you say people hate? Well, I don't want to put their names out there, but everybody was jealous. Who wouldn't be? Who's going to get that kind of moment? Who's going to go out there and get that kind of reaction from a crowd? I mean, not very few people I've ever seen have it because I just had that match later on. I had a match with Hunter there. Remember that, um, where they carried me around the ring and all yeah. that, and Austin yeah. came out. I mean, Greenville's a good market for me. So I've been very fortunate. It happened at the right time. It just, I made the decision to go back, and, and, and John was right. I would have sat home. My other attorney in Charlotte wanted to kill me for going back because he said, you're going to be rich. You will never have to look around. Again, people can't do that, but. You know, I decided to go back, and ultimately it worked out for me. And then then I got to have another run uh, with the WWE, which was great. So you know, the, guys that, the guys that tried to screw me around, um, I mean, it's like, where are they now? Right. So talking about that promo that night, um, 
did you guys have any sort of parameters or limitations or discussions beforehand about what no. you were going to say? Nope. But you knew Bischoff was going to come down. Yep. And uh, he just trusted that you were going to um, do something good for business. And obviously you did. We're still talking about it all these years later. Mm hmm. So when you walk back through the curtain, is there any discussion with anybody about what was said or business as usual? No, I mean, the guys loved it. I, um, I'll tell you a great story, which I'll never forget, is Rebecca, Sean's uh, wife, who was a nitro girl at that time, uh, ran up to me. I didn't know her and said, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That was awesome. Yeah. she. I mean, she I didn't even know her, and such a nice person, but to be someone that was, you know, probably like on the outside looking in, not being that familiar with the business, to come and say that to me was pretty cool. I've never forgotten it. She said, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. I said, thank you. <laughs> we'll see what I'm doing tomorrow. <laughs>